Hi. I've had a Buchla 200E for some time now, but this year I had several gigs with it and spent a lot of time getting it all organized for being the improvisational performance instrument. There aren't a lot of 200Es out there. They're extremely expensive, and it's rather difficult to be able to find a lot of information on the internet about them. And so I thought I would do a video here just showing what my current summer 2024 live Buchla 200E setup looks like. I'm not going to be playing sound examples because I'm also releasing footage of using this instrument live in concert, and so you can hear it then. The first thing to think about is footprint. Why did I pick a Buchla Skylab? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that it has 10 modules, which is really ostensibly enough to do whatever you need to be able to do in a live performance situation. Secondly, Modules are expensive, and this was quite enough money as it was. Thirdly, the Skylab folds up while patched and allows me to be able to put it into overhead storage when I'm traveling. So let's talk about the module choices. There are a bunch of absolutely must-have modules in here, um, and then there are a few others that you can swap in and out depending upon what it is that you like and what it is that your focus is on. I've swapped out quite a number of modules since I first bought the thing as I found what works for me and what doesn't, and I'm not done yet, but we're really pretty close. So the first decision that I made was that I wasn't going to be interested in using this with MIDI. As a result, I didn't get a module that has a MIDI interface, but it turns out that the Buchla program firmware card also substitutes as a MIDI interface. It's only 99 bucks, and so eventually I'll get it and plug it in. The first thing that you need on any Buchla is a mixer and some sort of a preset manager. As a result, I opted for the 206E. It's a six-channel mixer, and it has this preset manager down here. One of the things that makes the 200E so powerful is the fact that you can instantly store any configuration of knobs on here into a new preset. The result of that is that you can set it up and switch between presets to be able to do a performance that has got a lot of interest to it. I can't think of any other modular system that allows you to be able to store the values of all of the modules within the preset manager. For my latest piece with it, I have about 15 different presets that I'm able to go through during the course of a performance. Now, once you bring in a preset, you can certainly continue to tweak the knobs all you want. You can change things as far as you want to go with it, and then if you recall the preset, it instantly snaps everything back to the default position that you had the knobs in when you set the preset in the first place. The next two modules here are also absolute must-haves for any Buchla system, and they are responsible for allowing you to adjust the level and be able to get the signals from the system into the mixer itself. So the first one is the Quad Dynamics Manager, which is, in my case, the model 292E, um, and it essentially is four VCAs. It allows you to be able to take the audio input and then control it through control voltages before sending it back on out to the mixer. Going hand in hand with the Quad Dynamics Manager is the Quad Function Generator, model 281E. You absolutely have to have one of these things, and in its simplest way, it is four attack decay envelopes. However, you can use it in a number of different ways and configure it. So for example, you can set it up to be able to cycle back on itself, turning it into an LFO of sorts. There's also a quadrature function that allows you to be able to gang envelopes A and B and C and D together to be able to create a more complex envelope. Another thing that's absolutely critical is how to be able to control the parameters of the Buchla from some sort of a keyboard arrangement. In this case, we use this Thunderbird-looking capacitive sensor called a multi-dimensional kinesthetic input port, model 223E. You can reprogram each of these little pads to do all sorts of different things. They connect into this module here, the tactical input port, also module 223E. And you can see that there are control voltages coming out from this thing all over the synthesizer. 
it takes a long time to program it and figure out exactly what's going on, and the user interface is sort of the best of 1995. But once you figure it out, it allows you to not only trigger notes, but also you can start and stop sequences and arpeggiators with it. You can use it to adjust the filter or the timbre or any other modulation parameter that you can think of on the instrument. And I really think that the key to be able to get expressive on this instrument is making good use of the Model 223E. Then we get into the noise makers, the actual oscillators that we use to be able to generate the signals in the first place. Now, when I first bought this system, I made the mistake of buying three oscillator modules. It turned out that was one too many, and it took away room for me to be able to use other things instead. And so I think like most people who own a Skylab, I have two oscillators. The first one is the complex waveform generator, model 261E. This thing is modeled on more conventional oscillators, but still follows the West Coast synthesis paradigm in which you have simple sounds, sine waves, and then you can adjust them using timbre and other wave folding techniques to be able to get something that's much more complex. Each of these modules is actually two oscillators in one because there is the principal oscillator, which is the primary thing that's making the noise, and then there's a secondary modulation oscillator. Now, this modulation oscillator can be used to modulate the sound of the principal oscillator, or you can actually use it as a separate oscillator all by itself. My second oscillator is the twisted waveform generator, model 259E. This thing is very different. The way that it works is that it uses waveforms in memory that you can morph back and forth between to be able to change the sound. One of the most interesting parts of it is that some of the waveform areas just come out of the code that's running on the thing at any given time, and so you don't know what it's going to sound like. This is great for noisy sounds, although it's got a couple of fairly tame waveforms that you can use in the same way. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some of the other modules that you really need to be able to color the sound of your Buchla. Randomness is a big thing in the Buchla world, and so you need a module that will generate some sort of random voltages that you can use to adjust all sorts of different things. The quintessential Buchla random generator is the Source of Uncertainty Model 266E. However, in my case, I have the Uncertainty Source Model 267E. And the reason why is because it's actually two modules in one. The top half generates three different kinds of audio noise and also has four outputs for random control voltages. Two of them are sample and hold, and two of them generate more continuous random control voltages. The second half of this unit is a dual bandpass filter. Now, Buchla wasn't that into traditional low-pass filters, but a bandpass filter in this case is really a very useful thing within the system. One of them I use to generate ocean or wave-like sounds by taking one of the white noise outputs, putting it in, and then adjusting the frequency with control voltages along the way. Next up, it's a pretty good idea to be able to have a sequencer within your system. Now, I had started with the model 251E, which is a single space sequencer that had four separate sequences that you could program simultaneously. It's really powerful, and it can do an, a lot of stuff, including generating polyrhythms. However, I found that it was too programmy for me. It took such a long time to be able to create the different steps within it that I was losing interest and didn't really like it. The result of that is that I swapped it out for this two-panel unit, the 250. This system allows you to be able to adjust the voltages by using these knobs. There are two separate control voltages, like you might use for pitch, that you can use with the outer knobs, and then the inner set of knobs allows you to be able to adjust time values as it's moving from step to step. In addition, there are two separate pulses that you can set for each step as it goes along. And so if I'm using one set of control voltages to generate one type of ostinato, I could use the other set of control voltages and pulses to be able to generate a different kind of ostinato and have them be able to work with each other. As it turns out, within my live rig, I'm actually not using the pitch outputs of the sequencer at all. And the reason why is because I am either using the kinesthetic input port to be able to generate the pitches, or I'm generating them randomly by using the uncertainty source. 
However, I am making heavy use of the pulse outputs to be able to generate different rhythms. The last module in my system is the one that I think I'm going to swap out, and it's the control voltage processor model 267E. As you can see, it's the only module that I'm not using most of. There's a lot of stuff down here that I'm not taking advantage of. This is a system that has two of these transfer function areas where you can map uh, input and output values, which is really quite useful. But it also has six of these lag generators. No matter what I've done, I haven't been able to find a lot of really good uses for them. Um, and frankly, I think this is a waste of space. Either I'll get the Model 256E, which has four of these function generators, or maybe I'll pick up something else. I don't know. Now let's talk about the wiring for a moment. Uh, as you can see, my wiring is pretty tight and it allows my hands to be able to get in and reach some of the most salient parameters. I wanted to set this up so that there was as little repatching as I would have to do while performing live. The whole thing folds up with the cables in place, allowing me to be able to travel with it easily. The wiring was just sort of an evolutionary process, but once I got it to where I really wanted it, I tied it down with these Velcro tapes, and then it allowed me to be able to generate a lot of different presets from the way that the wiring is set up just the way that it is. I've only got a couple of places where I repatch while live in concert. The first one is right here. I have these two green connections into the two oscillators that are used when I want to be able to control them from the Model 223E, when I want to control them from this capacitive touch sensor pad. The rest of the time, I remove those green cables and plug in the orange cables. The orange cables generate random pitches from the uncertainty source, which is also useful in a very different way. One thing that I forgot to mention is that the 223E system here also has an extremely useful arpeggiator. Generally, I control the arpeggiator pitches from these eight tabs up here, and then I control the keyboard performative types of pitches for the other oscillator using these longer things down here. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is the outboard pedals that I use in conjunction with the Buchla system. Buchla sounds great, but it's really wonderful to be able to have more control of the audio on its way out. So the first thing that happens is the 200E goes into this wonderful looper, this Cosmos drifting memory station. There are a couple of different firmware sets that you can use with it. I've opted to use the rhythmic firmware set so that if I have a rhythm going on the Buchla, I can capture it and then keep it going and then go change things around and do other things with it. The Cosmos is very trippy. It's a uh, type of looper that you don't have all that much control over. You have some control, but you're really having sort of a dance with it rather than telling it exactly what to do. It sounds great, and I absolutely love it. The Cosmos then goes into the Strymon Timeline Delay, which I use just straight up for echoes. It has lots of knobs on it, so I don't have to do any menu diving while performing with it. I can just adjust whatever it is that I want to change on the fly, and that's exactly the way that I use it. Then finally, that goes into the Eventide Space Reverb, in which I typically use a Hall Reverb type of sound. I'm adjusting the decay, I'm adjusting the wet-dry mix, and I'm adjusting other parameters of the reverb as I'm going along as well. The Eventide then has a couple of quarter-inch outputs that just go directly into whatever PA system that I'm connected into, and that's all there is to it. So if you're considering getting a Buchla 200E system or learning more about them, I hope that this video has been of use to you. It took me a long time to really understand the system, and I'm getting great sounds out of it and wonderful performances, but it's definitely something that rewards diligence and a disciplined approach to be able to learn the whole system. For now, that's it. This is Nick from Under the Big Tree. Thanks very much, and have a wonderful day.